was hanging with you and then I realized I didn't think it was true I was so Greetings to my special lecturer, Miss Bibiana and all my fellow friends. My name is Nur Aina Shazani Binti Arman and I'm from group PAD381484 and today I will present about technology innovation in Southeast Asia. Innovation is widely recognized as the major source of long-term economic development and inclusive growth, not only by increasing productivity in businesses, industries, and macroeconomy, but also by stimulating higher consumption investment and exports. In order to make the ASEAN community more competitive in technological terms, the ASEAN countries are cooperating in the area of science, technology, and innovation. As we know, every country is different with the level of their technology and innovation. How countries achieve innovation depends on their industry capability, which is frequently referred to as innovation capability in the literature. Rationally, innovation capability gives a country a power to generate new ideas on its own and can thus take on physical, intangible and institutional features for developing countries to move ahead with their, with their economic development agendas. ASEAN has recognized the importance of improving the capability for developing science and technology. It has made many efforts to produce innovation and address the challenges on the way on an innovative ASEAN. Science and technology cooperation in ASEAN in fact started in 1971 with the establishment of the ASEAN Permanent Committee on Science and Technology because the objective of cooperating is to develop a science technology and technology and related human resources to encourage technology transfers within and outside ASEAN. ASEAN considered science, technology and innovation as a major foundation for attaining the ASEAN Vision 2020 that set out in 1997. The goal is to become a technological competitive ASEAN with an adequate pool of technologically qualified and trained manpower and strong networks of scientific and technological institutions and centers of excellence. Each AMS has a different typology of technology which is useful as a compass to guide individual AMS in the efforts to develop new products and services. Each of the AMS are at very different stages of innovation and have different types of technology and innovation. AMS has divided into several groups. Firstly is Singapore. Singapore is the only one as the members in the front phase of innovation and its innovation capability is almost at the same level as the as that of developed western countries malaysia is in the catch up phase and its innovation capability is relatively high just behind of the uh, of singapore Thailand is the most likely to catch up with Singapore and Malaysia which are in the catch up phase of their development. Indonesia, Thailand, the Philippines and Vietnam are in the learning phase uh, which characterized by the acquisition process of innovation capability. These countries are assumed to have significant potential to improve their innovation capability as their economics grows. On the other hand, Cambodia, Laos and Myanmar are in initial condition phase which means they are still need to establish nation building infrastructures and relevant institutions to set up their innovation capability. To conclude, every AMS and ASEAN as a whole requires an innovation policy. To achieve its own innovations, each of country must improve its innovation capability. However, based on all of this, innovation policy is needed in each AMS and for as ASEAN as a whole. It is important to enhance innovation capability in each country to achieve its own innovations especially in terms of technology. It is important for them to steadily move up the stages of innovation and to formulate appropriate policy in accordance with the typology of stages. Furthermore, it is also vital to encourage ASEAN region-wide policies to promote innovation that push individual AMS through. I hope you guys enjoyed my presentation. That's all from me. Thank you.